So you knew what had happened to you that night, basically. I knew it had happened to me. I knew it had happened to me, but I, you know, as you know, um, I'm from the region, and I was going to deal with it my own way and just have a one-on-one conversation with this man and say, look, don't ever put your hands on me again. And uh, that didn't happen once the staff became involved, once somebody that, you know, works for me became involved and some other women that work for, you know, work for um, the Senate Democrats and the Senate Republicans were involved, I decided that, you know, there, this was bigger than me, and I had a responsibility to report it to leadership because uh, these women come to Indianapolis to be mentored and to learn about learn about uh, professional conduct, and uh, this certainly was not professional conduct, and I had a responsibility to report it to leadership. Well, that's interesting because when you look at the other individuals and you mention, you know, they coming, they're coming there to be mentored. These are young women who would probably have never come forward because, like in many cases, they might have felt that nobody would believe them. So they you would, being uh, an elected individual and being also a victim of this coming forward gave them some type of, you know, confidence that someone would hear what they had to say. Well, and that was part of the whole thing that, you know, initially there was some discussion as, you know, did leadership respond appropriately? Why didn't they do more? And, you know, part of the hesitation on their part, I have to say, was because we wanted to remain anonymous, because the women wanted to remain anonymous. That was why, um, that was the whole, that was how it had, how and why it had sort of taken a different turn as as, and not, you know, made public right away. And so, you know, once once the attorney general publicly denied those charges and called us essentially liars, that was when I made the decision to come forward. I felt that I needed to be a voice for the women who hadn't found their voice yet. We're talking to Mara Candelaria Reardon. Mara, Mara what um, the the attorney general has denied this, uh, that any of this happened. Um, how do, how do you take that? You know, Jed, I can't make somebody take responsibility for their own actions. He needs to take responsibility for his actions, apologize and resign. That has been my stand from the very beginning. This is not appropriate conduct for the highest law enforcement officer of our state. And, uh, that's the way I feel about it. Now, you know what? The gentleman who actually investigated this, Stigler, he, he asked Stigler, he actually said that he found the accuser's motives sincere and that he believed Hill, a Republican, had touched them in a way that was inappropriate. He said he believes the allegations from the state lawmakers and three legislative staffers that Hill groped them at a March party in Indianapolis, but he concluded it would be too difficult to prove a case against Hill. Yeah, um, I'm not sure what that's about. Uh, you know, there were there were several witnesses to what happened. As you know, in the report, there's over 50 witnesses to the behavior and conduct of Curtis Hill that evening. And, you know, the report of the inspector general, the lengthy report the inspector general put forward is... Uh, to me, validation of what we've said all along. Mara, what do you want to happen here? I want to go back in time, Judd, and never have that guy's hands on me. That's what I'd really like to happen. What has that done to you mentally, emotionally? You know, it's been it's been trying. Um, there's some. There's certainly some. It, it's been very stressful. It's been very stressful. There's um, there's a level of stress stress that has manifested itself physically for sure um it's been it's it's certainly taken the shine off the drive down to indianapolis for me i certainly i loved i loved going down to indianapolis um you know it's, it's been a great experience so far um you know going down to indy and it's it's not as it's difficult. It's a little bit more challenging to get motivated to drive down. <laughs> I'm here now. Um, but, uh, 
yeah, it's just it's changed things a bit. It's made me more guarded. It's it's it hasn't been pleasant. Do you and think you that really think people things. now, when they see you, they equate this incident with you? I mean, you you're a well known individual in the house, and now this is one of the top issues that people are looking at when they look at you. Sure. I mean, I think my hesitation truly was um, coming forward, you know, because I was hesitant to come forward as well. And, and I think that, you know, who wants their name associated with somebody who behaves in a predatory fashion for the rest of their life? Now, forevermore, my name will be linked to Attorney General Curtis Hill. That's not a, that's something I didn't want to happen. If you could go back to that night, Mara, when this incident happened, was there anything you felt that you could have done differently, like maybe made a scene right then and there and called him out on it or, or anything else? Well, I think everybody's reaction is different. You know, there's the fight or flight. And for me, and I, you know, I know that people have this perspective of me that, you know, I'm, I'm tough and I'm a fighter and I'm scrappy and all these, you know, these, these things. And my 100% reaction at that moment was flight and not fight. And, you know, I did say, you know, I did say back off, get away, whatever I said at that moment, I still, my 100% instinct was to remove myself from that situation to get away. And I also know that I don't, I didn't know him. I don't know him. I don't know whether he's violent when he drinks or just handsy. So I didn't, I didn't want to risk it by, you know, slapping him or kicking him or, you know, those kinds of things that you think would be your reaction at that moment. Mine was flight, not fight. And and most people would advise flight rather than fight. That would be the advice that I'm sure in most instances people would give to you. Sure. But, I, you know, it was just a natural reaction. It was just like in that moment, I, that's how I reacted. I can't, you know, I can't apologize for that. I can't go back and, and change it. You know, certainly in retrospect, you know, who wouldn't want to say, you know, yeah, I would have slapped him. It's easy to say that until you're in that position. Mara, without getting too detailed, what exactly happened, and uh, not with just with you, but with Gabby and with uh, Nikki and Samantha? Well, I think, you know, we've talked about the specifics. You know, I was wearing something that had, you know, an open back, and basically he slid his hand. He put his hand on my back, on my shoulders, which was technically on my skin because I had a back, a low back dress. So he ran his hands down my back and basically in my dress. Point and being, whether or not your butt, sh- your so. dress was backless or not, he still had no, no business happened. running his hand down your back. Absolutely. Well, he pretended like he couldn't hear me and leaned in and put his hand on my back. And so that's how it started. And then the second time, I started. I basically saw him coming before he, you know, got all the way down my back. You know what I mean? I heard it. He said, that back, that skin, which is excessively creepy, too. So, um, yeah, and so I rolled out of it before he could get all the way down my back. Mara, what do you... uh... I knew what was coming. So, uh, you know, you you have a similar story to what uh, Gabrielle McLemore, Nikki De Silva, and Samantha uh, Lozano are telling. You told your story. There's no charges. There's no resignation here by Curtis Hill. What do you think right. the message out of all of this is for women who may be in a similar situation? Well, I hope that the message is that stronger together together we're stronger and the more women that come forward, the the more light we shine on this issue of sexual harassment in the workplace. I also believe that um, you know there has been a lot of discussion as to um, whether this you know whether this 
is a workplace because it didn't happen at a workplace. It happened at a work party. Well, the workday doesn't end at 5 o'clock. And um, that's what people have to remember, that their conduct after 5 o'clock in a workplace party, in a workplace setting, is also important. Exactly. Everyone knows about the Christmas parties. The thing about it, Mara, for those who would try and paint this as politically motivated by just the individuals who are involved, yourself being an elected Democrat, but also those staffers, some of them actually were Republican staffers. Is that correct? Yeah, one of them was a Republican staffer. But what I would say to that is that what is the political gain of of three other lobbyists contained in the inspector general's report who felt uncomfortable touching by Curtis Hill as well. There is no political motivation for a lobbyist to come forward. And so I, there's just, a, it's just yet another example of excuses. And um, there's no way that anybody can read the inspector general's report and not conclude what happened. 